in this talk we will come across the electrolytic based techniques particularly electro deposition techniques and also the solution based techniques like electrolysis deposition techniques. So, both the techniques are applied for the development of a very thin coated layer on the surface of the metallic substrate. So, as the name implies in one case we basically use electrolytic current for the deposition purpose other case it is free from any kind of electrolytic process it is we do not need to apply any electrolytic electric uh, electrical current for the process to occur. So, first we will discuss about the electro deposition process. So, it is the process of development of a very thin to moderately thick coating layer on the surface of substrate for developing the completely another layer on the substrate for improving the wear resistance, for improving corrosion resistance, for improving the aesthetic appearance of the surface as well as, well as for development of completely new kind of component in practice. So, usually this process is very simple where we use the component or substrate as the cathode and we pass electrical current. Anode is may anode may be made of the consumable materials consumable anode or it may be made of kind of inert anode and when you pass electrical current what happens is that there is deposition on the surface of cathode and that deposited layer is actually dependent on the kind of deposition kind of solution electrolytic solution you are using and naturally based on your requirement. So, as the name implies this is electro deposition and where you need to have the conductive substrate and the metal which you are going to deposit has also to be conductive. So, you will find that for electro deposition you need to have any kind of you cannot have any kind of substrate. So, basically the substrate has to be highly substrate. So, you are used which you are used for electro deposition it have to be conductive in leisure. So, non conducting surface cannot be used for substrate uh, in electro deposition. So, usually substrates are highly conducting in nature. So, on the other hand if you talk about deposition ideally all metallic materials may be deposited by electro deposition technique but there are certain limitations all metals cannot be deposited by electro deposition techniques. These are the dark hatch colored are the normal metals which are easily electro depositable. So, cross hatched metals are the intermediate metals which may be deposited and then again light hatched metals are like inert metals which may be again deposited and if you talk about the white hatched metal metallic metals they, are, they cannot be deposited they are not depositable. So, you will find that not all metallic materials may be deposited by electro deposition process. So, for the electro deposition to occur first of all the aqueous salt or aqua aqueous uh, electrolyte has to be available unless and until aqueous electrolyte of that metal is available you cannot do electro deposition this is the first requirement. Second requirement is that when you deposit the metal in the cathode naturally there is also the process of hydrogen evolution process. So, hydrogen evolution process the kinetics of hydrogen evolution at that potential should not exceed the deposition process that is second requirement. Third requirement is that there should not be any oxide formation of the metal ion which you are producing in the electrolyte. So, these are three important requirements for the materials to get depositable. So, because of that you will find that not all metals can be deposited by the typical way of electro deposition. This is the typical set of our electro deposition process. So, where you use the metal as that typical cathode and your anode may be consumable anode, your may anode may be non consumable conductive anode. So, what you do is that when you and your electrolyte should contain the electrolyte or plating solutions is the source of ions of that metal which you are going to deposit. And you apply the electrical power supply, the power supply may be your normal DC power supply unit or it may be pulse power supply unit 
and you have to expose for a certain period of time. If you are interested to increase the kinetics of the deposition, you have to increase the temperature to a little extent. So, these are the requirement for the electro deposition. So, now if you quickly go through the deposition rate, deposition rate is very much can be calculated by the application of Faraday's law. So, if you just quickly go through the deposition rate, you will find that it follows the typical Faraday's law when it, it depends on the amount of electrical current that is or current density that is uh, that you are passing for the electro deposition and that of time and it, it is also dependent on the electrochemical equivalent of that metal which you are going to deposit. So, if it is the W which is go which mass of the electrode mass of the element that you are going to deposit or weight of the electrode weight of the materials which you are going to deposit that is equal to Z I D where Z is nothing but typical electrochemical equivalent I is the current density and T is the time. So, this is very important and this gives you typical amount of metal which is going to deposit for a given solution or for a given metal. So, this is again a kind of value which gives you information under ideal condition. In real condition there are several factors which play important role and which reduces the kinetics of the electro deposition process. Now, if you quickly go through the application of the electroplating, it is usually mostly applied for typical uh, aesthetic appearance enhancement purpose. It can also be applied for coating for corrosion resistance application, it can also be applied for wear resistance application and it can also be applied for development of the micro parts of the for the EMIMS. And one of the biggest limitation of this electro deposition is that when you electro deposit there is also chance of the charge accumulation along the edges and corners of the deposited layer. So, when the problem of charge towards the problem of the charge uh, generation is there or charge concentration is there around the corners or sharp points, you will find that there is actually a change in the thickness along the corners and the difference in thickness causes problem. So, after the electro deposition is over, you have to take out the extra metal and make it uniform in thickness. So, whenever it is important that you do electro deposition of different shaped component of thick product or thick electro deposited layer, you have to design the component in such a fashion that there is no chance of accumulation of the charges along the corners or different parts of the component. So, otherwise electro deposition is a very good process and can be applied for any component like shaft, roll, knife, dies, this hard chromium coating for the typical wear resistance application. So, it can also be applied for the soft metal gasket, then anti size bearings, decorative road lights and bathroom fittings can be applied for production of micro parts for beams application. So, these are the typical applications of the electro deposition. Now, if you quickly go through the electro deposition process in a real condition, you will find that in real condition the Faraday's law is not followed. So, whenever you dip the electrode in an electrolyte containing the metal ions, you will find that there is a potential across the interface. The electrochemical cell needs to be formed to measure the that delta phi and two types of potentials are there metal non metal potential redox potential. So, when you talk about this charge accumulation naturally there is always a very thin layer formation that uh, which actually acts as a barrier to subsequent electro deposition when you do electro deposition in practice. So, that charge accumulation at the interface causes as barrier for subsequent electro deposition process. So, when it is there naturally you have to be careful you have to break the layer or otherwise the deposition rate will be slowed down. So, the presence of excess charge on metal causes the ion distribution the re reorientation of the water dipoles. So, this is very important there is always presence of very thin solvated layer on the surface of the metal when you do electro deposition process. So, because of the solvated layer accumulation you will find that potential on the surface gradually drops down. 
So, this gradual drop in proposed potential causes the reduction in the kinetics of the electrodeposition process. So, this is called uh, Helmholtz double layer, Helmholtz double layer formation is there, then Gui Chapman layer is also there. So, you will find that because of presence of the sulfated ions, there is always accumulation of charge at the near surface region. So, the charge accumulation decreases the weight of the metal which is actually deposited and there is always a difference between the weight which is calculated from Faraday's law and the weight of the metal which is actually deposited and these two differences actually or the ratio between the two gives you the efficiency of the electro deposition process. Now, if you quickly go through the bath which are used for example, in case of nickel deposition this is uh, nickel bath. So, you can have the nickel sulfate solution, nickel chloride solution, boric acid is used for uh, usually for uh, as a kind of additives for uh, ch ch changing the brightness of the process. You can use ferrous sulfate as buffer and also you can have different other additives for reaction slow down. And when you talk about the electro deposition naturally you will find that deposited layers are in the form of atoms and those atoms can migrate also on the surface because of the presence of several defects on the surface and then migrated atoms they, they occupy the defects and corners defects on the sides. So, defects on the side. So, naturally you will find that at the surface if you just clearly see the interface you will find that at the interface there is atomic level diffusion and that atomic level diffusion actually offers the adhesion or strength of the coating. So, now if you quickly go through the factors which influence the electro deposition they are current density, the nature of anions or cations in the solution, bath composition and temperature, solution concentration, power supply current waveform, presence of impurities and physical and chemical nature of the substrate surface these are important. So, now if you talk about the different type of uh, parameters which influence the electro deposition kinetics, they are first important parameters influencing the kinetics of electro deposition are current density and time and apart from current density and time the bath composition additives they are also important parameter and finally, the kind of current you are using whether it is in DC mode or pulse mode that also influences the process to a large extent. So, that particular current can be applied in two different modes one is pulse current another one is pulse reverse current. So, in DC plating the constant current is used and the rate of arrival of metal ion depends on their diffusion coefficient and in pulse and pulse reverse plating a modulated current waveform is used and that particular modulated pulse waveform basically offers very nice leveling and also cleaner deposition and also minimize the porosities and contamination on the surface. The morphology of some metal and alloy deposits were found to be superior to be dissipated deposit. Now, complex current waveform can be generated by pulse rectifier. So, you can use different pulse rectifier for complex current waveform generation. So, whenever you talk about unipolar current naturally you have two important unipolar current that means, it basically uh, changes with uh, time and it is uh, it is only in that uh, you are that your same cathode acts as cathode and or maybe you sometimes stop the uh, cathodic reaction. So, you either current is uh, of very high value or current is 0. So, in this unipolar current what you do is that in the cathode or in the anode the current density is either maximum or 0 and there there are two important parameters one is cathodic peak pulse current density another one is cathodic pulse length and interval between the pulses these are important parameters. So, average current density may be measured by knowing these all values like if you have the uh, current density of the cathode is J c and if your cathodic pulse time is T c. So, in that case current density in the cathode average current density in the cathode is equal to J c into T c divided by T c plus T p. On the other hand the duty cycle is nothing but T c divided by T c plus T p. Hmm. So, 
this is actually these are the two important parameters one is average current density in the cathode another one is uh, that typical time of uh, duty cycle or time of uh, time of cathodic interact time of the deposition actually. So, these two parameters uh, finally, gives you information about the overall time actually that is uh, overall time or overall current that is flowing on the cathode. So, on the other hand if you talk about the bipolar current that means, same cano cathode is acting as cathode and anode simultaneously. So, there are two important parameters like cathodic pulse peak pulse current density, cathodic pulse length, then anodic pulse time and anodic current density. These are four important parameters and naturally G average equal to the cathodic current density and time for cathode the anode time for which it is cathode plus cathodic current density time for cathodic and anodic current density into time for which it is anode divided by total time like T c plus T a. On the other hand if you talk about the duty cycle it it is equal to J c into T c minus J a by T a divided by J c T c. So, these two parameters when are there then total current that is flowing over the system you get information by multiplying J that cathode average current with that of average duty cycle. So, now if you talk about the pulse current on deposited property it is having certain advantages over DC current. For example, if you think of about electro deposition process you will find that electro deposition is active till the or maybe you can say that total uh, any car any deposition process consists of two stages one is uh, nucleation and growth second one is growth. So, usually nucleation rate of the electro deposition process is proportional to that of current density. So, when you talk about electron uh, nucleation rate it is proportional to that of current density. So, as it is proportional to that of current density naturally you will find that higher the current density higher will be the nucleation rate of the deposition. On the other hand if you talk about growth rate growth is growth rate is proportional to time of time of the interaction or duty cycle. So, if you go on increasing the current density and decrease the duty cycle you will find that the growth will be restricted. So, if you are interested to have very fine deposited layer on the surface of any substrate you should increase the typical current density and you, you should decrease the duty cycle. So, these two things can be independently varied in case of pulse or pulse reverse mode. On the other hand in DC mode you cannot really vary these all things and grain size depends on duty cycle of the bath. So, this is very important that uh, you should use the pulse current in and pulse reverse current so that you get the required uh, required grain size and also required properties in the coated layer. So, uh, it is uh, naturally your uh, ultimate structure will be dependent on the current density and duty cycle combinations. It is very important that you fix them up, fix them up or you optimize them properly. Usually if you talk about DC electro deposition process there you get very large columnar grains or dendritic grains. On the other hand if you talk about the um, electro deposition by pulse or pulse uh, reverse mode your deposition structure is highly uniform it is compact in nature. So, the uh, thickness of the deposited layer and also its microstructure can easily be controlled by controlling these parameters. On the other hand if you are interested to control the other factors like uh, your leveling of the bath if you are interested to control the or minimize the charge charge density along the corners you have to go for typical uh, other kind of uh, equipment that is ampere time instrument where you basically uh, go on fixing up ampere and time and also you can change the bath composition in order to have proper leveling of the bath so usually if you add if you add some complex reagent in the bath usually it reduces the kinetics of the deposition and by this process it basically level the structure very to a very large extent. 
and current efficiency is also very important current efficiency equal to uh, a rate of which uh, it is uh, deposited uh, the in that uh, and also rate of uh, which at, at least it is deposited as per the faraday's law and to uh, to that of the rate at which it is actually deposited so, ratio of actual deposited layer to that of uh, the same which is ex experimentally or theoretically calculated by faraday's law these two ratio gives you information about uh, current efficiency. So, current efficiency is very important because it, if it is high then naturally you can say that the rate of deposition is very high hindrance is quite minimum. On the other hand if it is low naturally you will find that many hindrances are there uh, while moving the ions. Now, last one is macro throwing power. So, it is nothing but the ability of a bath to produce deposits of more or less uniform thickness uh, over macroscopic irregularities is termed as macro throwing power. It is very important term actually. So, lower is the macro throwing power naturally you will find that it is a ability of method to deposit uniform the higher is the macro throwing power naturally higher will be the uniform deposited layer. So, macro throwing power is very important. So, if you go on adding for example, nickel plating shows uh, poor macro throwing power. So, though it is having very high deposition rate, but poor micro th macro throwing power that means, when you deposit the nickel by electro deposition process naturally if you have sharp corners in the component their deposition thickness will be go lower than that of deposition thickness will be higher than that of rest of the part. So, deposition thickness if you are interested to have very fine uniformly deposited layer you have to go on having the bath or solution which basically offers low macro throwing power. So, macro throwing power is uh, higher macro throwing power. So, macro throwing frying is power is very important and usually you can enhance the macro throwing power by reducing the rate of the deposition by addition of different complex reagent in the solution. So, if you use complex baths like uh, by, by the application of complex bath the deposition potential basically are amenable to hydrogen evolution which completes the metal deposition process and uh, the cathodic efficiency falls as current density is increased this results in more uniform deposit on cathodic macro irregularity. So, this is very important because in the cathode you have also hydrogen evolution. So, if you have very high macro throwing power deposition rate is very slow because of hydrogen evolution that basically levels your deposit. So, macro throwing power is a very interesting parameter which is important for leveling the deposition. So, next type of deposition is electrolyzed deposition process. So, electrolyzed deposition you do not need to pass in electrical current where, but you do add reducing agent in order to change the metal ions to its, to its metal atom to its atom. So, usually electrolyzed deposition techniques are very much uh, this technique is very much powerful technique for development of the coating on non metallic materials particularly non metallic materials like wood or maybe polymers or ceramic materials for metallizing them or otherwise metallic materials which otherwise is difficult to coat deposit on for example, aluminum, magnesium the stainless steel on which deposition is very difficult there you can use the electrolyzed deposition process. So, the basic purpose process is very easy actually. So, where you basically in the solution you add reducing agent and common reducing agents are formaldehyde, hypophosphorus acid, alkali borohydrides and alkali diborates. So, these particular agents when you add naturally the metal ions gets reduced to its uh, metal atom and it get deposited onto the surface of the substrate. So, here uh, you do not need to add any electrical contact. So, it is electrical contactless process. So, you can apply this particular deposit without any electrical contact and hence this is very important process for deposition on conductive as well as non conductive material. So, if you are interested to do electro deposition on non conductive material or those metals which otherwise is difficult to be used as uh, electro deposition substrate there if you first do electrolyzed deposition and then deposit the 
thin nickel layer, electrolyzed deposited nickel layer or copper layer. Then if you use, a, use it as substrate for subsequent electro deposition, your deposition rate becomes very high. So, it is readily available for three dimensional coverage, there is no field lines are present and the deposition is almost uniform. This is a very useful technique, but heat's efficiency is much lower than that of the same for electro deposition or kinetics of the process is quite slow. Because in this case, you are basically using reducing agent to cause metal atoms and whenever metal atoms are produced, they are distributed non-uniformly all throughout the surface. Some of the metal atoms are less, uh, lost in the environment. So, actual deposited metals is much lower than that of the same which you are generating by the process of the uh, ionization. So, but this technique is mostly applied for ionization of the conductor, uh, metallizing of condu non conductors like for electrical conductivity in PCB, for metallic appearance as in buttons, doors, knobs, wheels in toys, for strength actually certain parts of the component whose functions are fully utilized when the properties of both metal and non metals are combined. And usually non metallic materials are deposited by electrolyzed deposition. So, this is very useful technique uh, for and also a kind of important technique to deposit a very thin deposited layer by electro deposition where the substrate is non conductive. So, one of the important process which is uh, which plays very important role in electro deposition is that evolution of hydrogen actually. So, hydrogen evolution is a competitive process. So, in the cathode there is hydrogen evolution as well. So, whenever you talk about electro deposition or electrolyzed deposition naturally atomic hydrogen they are basically they may get diffused in. So, if you are interested to get rid of the particular hydrogen you can also go for annealing operation. So, that hydrogen is no more there. So, this is very important process. So, in this particular process we discussed about electro deposition as well as electrolyzed deposition. We also discussed about the chemical conversion and electrochemical conversion process. So, both the processes are all the processes are very important particularly if you talk about conversion coating they are mostly used for changing the appearance of the surface for protection against corrosion and also as a base for subsequent painting operation. On the other hand electro or electrolyzed deposition may be used for only metallic deposition on the surface of the substrate may be metal or non metal. The metal deposition which occurs may be for corrosion resistance application may be for wear resistance application and usually this deposited layer is having some kind of bonding with the substrate uh, at the interface there is only also diffusion process. On the other hand in the chemical conversion coating the converted the substrate itself is converted to its uh, compound. So, the interface is very adherent in nature. On the other hand, in electro and electrolyzed deposition process, there is a very sharp interface. So, whenever you talk about the application of the electro deposition, you have to also think of the interface very nicely because interfacial adherence must be at a very higher level and where you need to apply very high strength or fatigue uh, fluctuating load on the component, you need not apply electro deposited substrate. So, you have to be very careful in knowing the application of the product which you are depositing by electro deposition technique. Thank you very much.